So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm Ray Micah. This is my colleague Mo Ahmed. Uh, we're from Samsung Ads. We're going to talk about our experience uh, live migrating production clusters from Calico to Cilium. So on our agenda today, we're going to go through the objective of the migration, some of the reasons why uh, we did it, the different method, uh, methods that we considered for the migrations. Uh, we're going to go through the actual steps for the migration uh, path that we ended up choosing. Mo is going to bravely take us through a live demo, and then we'll give some closing thoughts. So our platform is live, and it's used by applications that generate the significant majority of our revenue at Samsung Ads. Obviously, that means it was important for us to have a path providing minimal downtime. We had about 20 clusters at the time of this migration. Uh, our clusters are managed by Rancher, and they're a mix of AWS and bare metal environments. More than half of those 20 clusters are running production workload, and uh, the sizes vary from relatively small with just tens of nodes, and the larger ones can be anywhere from 300 to over 500 nodes. We decided that we wanted to swap to Cilium, I'll talk a little bit more about our reasonings for that in the next slide, um, but for now, I'll just say we're looking forward to some new features like gateway API support, some of the light service mesh features, and of course, Hubble for uh, network visibility. Our primary considerations when we're planning on migration were centering, uh, centered around finding a path with the following characteristics. Ideally, we'd have no impact to our services that are generating revenue. We also wanted the migration to be largely transparent to end users, some awareness and readiness for the changes expected, but uh, we didn't want to impose any significant amount of work on our users of the platform to accomplish the change. And lastly, for our own sake, not having to have the platform team perform some marathon migration, you know, working overnight, anything like that, having good uh, controllable rollout was important. So the you know, specific reasons that we were looking to make the change, uh, obviously, eBPF forwarding. We know it works. We know it's performant. We had an interest in uh, having XDP. Being an ad tech, we have uh, a handful of apps that are quite latency sensitive, kind of you know, 40 millisecond processing time only in our infrastructure, and then have to return to exchanges with uh, responses. And we wanted to ensure that in our Kubernetes uh, layers, we have the lowest overhead. Uh, a lot of our backend applications were being migrated from bare metal without Kubernetes all the way to AWS with Kubernetes kind of in one shot. And we wanted to maintain the low latency performance. So using XDP uh, and the enhanced uh, load balancing that Cilium provides is one way to help us accomplish that. Uh, we really wanted to use the Kube proxy replacement with Cilium. If you've used Kubernetes in AWS, you know that uh, connecting apps to AWS load balancers is kind of just a mess of node ports underneath it all. Um, and that can make applying policy at those layers a bit of a challenge if your CNI is deferring the implementation of node ports into Kube proxy. Um, and because of that, using Cilium lets us apply policies with clear identities for no matter any type of service. So those improvements let us have uh, better self-service for end users, as well as auditability for our security teams to be able to under understand exactly what our network policies are doing. Um, and then obviously, I mentioned before, new features. Gateway API in particular was a big one for us. Uh, our SRE team is working on improving deployment procedures, having the ability to use Gateway API to do traffic switching and canary blue-green deployments uh, has the potential to really improve that uh, deployment workflow for all of our users. And then I mentioned the enhanced load balancing with Cilium. That's very important for our latency-sensitive apps. Uh, you know, all the fun stuff with socket rewrites and, and uh, that type of thing with Cilium services. So the, the migration methods that we considered, uh, I think this list is fairly self-explanatory, but this is kind of what we came up with when we were just brainstorming how we could do it. Obviously, you know, the simplest one as a platform engineer is let's just deploy new stuff and make the other people do the work. Um, Obviously, that's fairly heavy for end users. 
theoretically, you could just uninstall your existing CNI and install the new one. Uh, there's some you know, fairly unpredictable things if you go that route. And then we had the uh, idea of binding multiple network interfaces uh, using Multis. Um, and lastly, attempting to do a, a hybrid migration using Cilium's per node configuration feature that was released in Cilium 113. So I'll go through just a couple of those. Um, so yeah, we could just deploy new clusters. Uh, just deploy new ones with Cilium as our CNI. It removes dependency on our legacy stuff. Obviously, significantly, amount, uh, significantly more work for end users. And uh, ultimately, no matter how easy it may be to deploy an application to a new cluster, every app has different deployment, rollout, migration concerns. And uh, it would basically just make the amount of time where we had to run this migration not under our own control. Um, having high adoption is a good problem to have, but when we have a whole bunch of teams that have their own priorities, it, you're just kind of hurting cats. So ultimately, uh, you know, we just discarded this fairly early. It didn't make sense for us. You could just uninstall the CNI plugin and install the new one. Obviously, this has disruption to your existing environments. Um, your maintenance is cluster-wide and can potentially last a fairly long time, depending on if you have any failures. And it's you know, relatively difficult to revert back. It's kind of an all-or-nothing approach. So when we had kind of discarded all of these options, we set out to find a solution that we could apply in a more controlled way. Um, and I'll pass it off to Mo to talk about those. All right. So uh, as Ray mentioned, one of the other alternatives was to be able to use Maltis and bind multiple ports to a single pod. Uh, this idea actually came from a blog post uh, from Jet Jetstack, now Vanafi. Uh, we've linked the blog post uh, in the slides. But essentially, we were able to we'd be able to use Maltis to bind multiple networking interfaces to a pod and have one networking interface be uh, served by Calico, and the other one being served by Cilium. Um, in these diagrams, they use Canal, but you know the, the theory kind of translates. Um, so we would start off with you know the, the Calico uh, CNI. We would then go into an intermediate step where we have both Cilium and Calico installed, uh, with Calico being the primary uh, CNI provider. We would then switch priorities to Cilium and then eventually be able to get rid of uh, Calico altogether. Um, this didn't work for us, uh, unfortunately. Um, we were able to install Maltus, and we were able to set as, as a default CNI, and it was serving uh, network traffic on the pod. And we could also see that the pods had both network interfaces configured, uh, one serving Calico and the other Cilium. Um, and we had Calco set as a primary CNI, so all that was working. Uh, but we couldn't get the pods to talk e to each other on the different interfaces. So it was either uh, being able to talk on just Calico interfaces or Cilium. And this would cause problems to us because it would be disruptive to the workloads. Uh, there was periods of uh, in, uh, um, non-connectivity between the pods that we weren't able to kind of iron out and really figure out why that was happening. And just overall, there was uncertainty around this um, migration path. Um, there was also, you know, the one of the steps in that post uh, was to use source-based routing to kind of eliminate this problem. Uh, so SBR is a meta plugin that you can use. Uh, but we weren't able to configure in a way that would work for both interfaces. So we kind of parked that to the side. But we did learn a lot. Uh, we were able to have a reusable um, rollback strategy. So from when something would inevitably uh, when it would eventually crash and burn. Uh, so we were able to roll back uh, to you know, going back to Calico. Uh, we understood that we need to update our Rancher cluster agents. As Ray mentioned, we use Rancher as our top management uh, control plane for our downstream clusters to use host network uh, for those agents to maintain connection while we're you know, messing around with the CNI. 
Uh, and we understood CNI configuration in, in a little bit more detail. Um, using Halp Maltus helped us understand the configuration of that structure, and you'll see that in the demo, uh, where Maltus manipulates those configurations in the Etsy CNI uh, folder to manage priorities, do some CNI chaining, and all that good stuff. So we were able to use that knowledge for when we actually applied the, the migration. And then we also learned a little bit more about Cilium configuration and about uh, the way that uh, the Cilium can take over CNI paths uh, using CNI exclusivity mode and things that we may not necessarily want to do when we're running both uh, network providers within the cluster. Um, so this brought us into the Cilium version 1.13. This was released like as we were actually actively trying to do this. Um, so that was very convenient timing. Uh, and this per node configuration allows you to specify a Cilium configuration on a per node basis based on node labels. So we, were, we would be able to use this in our migration um, to Cilium. And then we actually also used it later on when we did Q proxy replacement and uh, all that other stuff. Um, so with this, we can use Calico as a default CNI, and once the node is labeled, we would restart Cilium agents to take over that uh, instance and basically manage pods under that. Um, one important thing we need to make sure to do is whitelist uh, pod network ciders uh, for both Calico and Cilium in each other's firewall rules um, in order to allow for communication between pods. So pods that are just running Calico can still talk to pods that are running Cilium. Uh, just from kind of a big picture perspective uh, for running the migration, um, these are kind of the steps. We're going to go into it a little bit um, just from a, a pers like a just from this diagram perspective. Uh, so first of all, uh, preparing the environment. Uh, one thing you need to make sure to set is the Calico uh, IP auto detection method because by default it tries to take over the interfaces on those instances. And when you have Cilium installed at the same time, Cilium produces its own uh, virtual uh, interfaces on the underlying uh, instance. And Calico starts to freak out because it doesn't know how to manage this or can't take it over and eventually goes into a crash loop. Uh, so that was important to do. Um, we also, like I mentioned, whitelisting the Cilium ciders in the existing firewall rules so that we can have seamless uh, in connectivity between the two. Um, for preparing the Cilium deployment, there are certain settings that you want to specify. Um, in just going to point out one specific one was the cluster pool cider. Um, so this was uh, a, a configuration that you can set so that Cilium uh, specific pods will be on a different network than the Calico ones. And you'll see that in, in the demo. Um, and just making sure that's not an overlapping cider. Uh, and then for deploying the actual per node configuration, uh, there's this custom resource definition that was introduced with this feature called Cilium node config, uh, which will basically allow you to override any default values uh, based on those node labels. And you'll see that uh, when we do uh, the demo as well. Uh, we'll dive into now the migration uh, for the nodes. Um, we're going to pick a node. We're going to cordon and drain it. We label the node as we intend to restart uh, as we intend for it to take over. We're going to restart the Cilium pods, validate that the CNI is in place. Then we uncoordinate, restart any existing workloads like daemon sets that wouldn't be taken care of by the, by the initial drain. And then you know, if there are any more nodes, we kind of rinse repeat until we're done. Uh, if you're in larger clusters with more generic node groups, then you can do this with more than one node at a time. And we kind of did that in some of our bigger production clusters. Um, all right, so let's dive in. Oh, and sorry, like I mentioned, uh, once this is all done, we're going to set Cilium as a default CNI. We clean up the Calico remnants, and then you're done. All right, so let's dive into the demo a little bit. Um, I'm going to ask Ray to hold that. And just give me one second while I mirror so I can see what I'm doing. OK. All right. So bear with us. This is a live demo. Uh, we're going to try and try and do it here. Um, and we're just going to keep referring back to this uh, slide a little bit. So let's just do that over here. All right. So what we have right now is, I hope you can see that, uh, is a Kubernetes cluster just using Kind, Kubernetes, and Docker. Uh, it has a control plane and three worker nodes is all running locally on my uh, laptop. 
Uh, nothing much kind of installed on the actual cluster, just a couple of you know, service pods. Uh, Calico is obviously installed. Uh, there's this application called, uh, called Goldfinger. Uh, it's a, uh, a product developed by Bloomberg and open source. And that's what you kind of see here. Uh, it allows you to kind of do pings between instances. And this was kind of pivotal, actually, in identifying when we're actually doing a migration that things continue to be uh, connected and, and green. Um, and we actually adopted this uh, in our overall uh, observability strategy after, uh, after introducing it here. Um, OK, so we're going to go ahead and install, actually, I'm going to show you here first uh, some of the value files that we had to overwrite when we install Helm. Like I mentioned before, uh, creating a separate uh, CIDR network is important. Uh, making sure that we're uh, not restarting unmanaged pods, uh, because at this present time, uh, Calico is managing those pods, and we don't want Cilium to touch those. Uh, we also make sure that the CNI is not going to uninstall everything um, and is going to proceed as normal. So we're going to go ahead and run Helm install. Uh, and we're going to see this kind of installing Cilium into our cluster. Uh, we see at the top. Uh, that the Cilium pods are kind of coming up uh, and we'll go into a running state shortly. Uh, I'm just going to, while that's happening, point you to the Cilium node config. Like I mentioned, this is the custom resource definition that will allow you to override the defaults that we specify in our original deployment. So in this case, we're going to uh, actually deploy the Cilium conf list um, to this uh, CNI directory. We're going to then take over the CNI exclusivity, and then we're going to do that only on nodes that are labeled with this label. Um, so I'm just going to apply this. OK, apply. Perfect. OK. Um, and you know, one handy dandy tool uh, is the Cilium CLI, uh, and using Cilium status to actually see uh, some of the, you know, gives you a kind of a snapshot of how well your uh, cluster is performing. Uh, uh, you see here that the Cilium agents are healthy, operators running, uh, and you'll see here that zero out of the seven pods in the cluster is actually managed by Cilium. This makes sense. This number will go up as we start to migrate more and more of the nodes. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you here was uh, this. So this is um, um, exec into the kind worker that we're going to be kind of working with. You see here that in the CNI directory, it's only Calico installed. There's no mention of Cilium, nothing else in here. OK, so let's uh, go to our uh, little chart here. Uh, let's first pick a node. And we're going to go ahead and pick um, kind worker. Um, there are three different worker nodes. You kind of want to start with your worker nodes and then update your control plane afterwards. So we've uh, done it with a kind worker uh, node. Uh, now we're going to cordon and drain it. Drain it. Uh, so go ahead and drain. So you see here some of the things that start to move away from kind worker. Um, obviously, daemon sets are not affected by this, so the gold pinger pod continues to run. And I'll just point out that this is running on the 192 Calico network. Uh, and you will see here that the scheduling is disabled because we've gone ahead and drained it and cordoned it. All right, now we're going to label the node. Um, so The node is now labeled with our default uh, Cilium as um, in its uh, set to true, which will allow us to uh, take over that node with Cilium. Uh, we're going to go ahead and restart the Cilium pod. So uh, I'm just going to do this from here. Oops. Cilium pod, let's go ahead and kill that one. It's going to spin up again. The Cilium agent will now see that this node is labeled and will actually take it over. Um, and you will see that shortly when we do here. We see here now that Cilium has injected its own config into the CNI directory. And because of the exclusivity, we've actually um, uh, set the Calico config to a Cilium underscore back uh, extension, which means it won't be used uh, at all by the pod sandbox when it spins up. Uh, so we validated the new CNI. And now let's go ahead and uncord in the node and start um, cordon. Uh, so now any new workloads uh, getting, being scheduled on this kind worker will actually pick up Calico. Um, like I mentioned, because Goldfinger is running as a daemon set, 
it uh, is not affected by this. So we're just going to go ahead and manually kill it. And we'll see it come up with a 10.245 network, which is what we expect being the Cilium one. Uh, let's kind of double check this here. Oops. Port forward is our friend. And we're going to go ahead and go uh, refresh the Goldpinger uh, interface. And again, we see connectivity across all three things. So that's, again, a good sign. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to check Cilium status. And we see here that one out of the seven pods are managed by Cilium. And now we can kind of rinse, repeat um, until we're, we're done. Um, I think I have a little bit of time. I'm just going to show you what a rollback looks like. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uninstall Cilium. You know, for whatever reason, let's say uh, an issue happened, uh, we can go ahead and uninstall it. Um, so it's going to remove it from our cluster. Uh, and then we can actually uh, manually change in here, remove the, the Cilium config, and then move the Calico one to make it in place. And then we can go ahead and restart our kind worker uh, Goldfinger pod, and it's going to come up on the 192 Calico interface. So this is just a rollback in case we need to do that. All right. OK, some things to consider. Um, so in our kind of environment, our clusters were only running IPv4. Uh, so your mileage may vary for IPv6 clusters. Um, and in our cluster, we were actually running a pretty old Calico version. So some extra cleanup was needed to flush out some of the IP table rules. Um, but as you saw, we were running it with the latest Calico. And you know the migration happened um, as expected. Same with the Cilium version. Um, as mentioned before, we kept the queue proxy replacement out of this migration, um, but we did it eventually. Uh, but that was just to reduce complexity. Um, we kind of shot ourselves up self in the foot a little bit because we did have some host port services. I know the Confluent folks talked about that uh, earlier this morning. Um, with the host port, we had some host port services that we needed to enable the port map, which is CNI chaining, um, which allows us to actually you know, reach those host port services until we were able to run the queue proxy replacement. Um, and we also have a blog post uh, about this that has some more details. So with that, I'm going to pass it to Ray for some closing thoughts. Yeah, so like I said, we had a little bit over 20 clusters. Most of them were in production. Some of them were quite large um, with a few hundred nodes. Obviously, when we were migrating larger nodes uh, or larger clusters, uh, batching and labeling a whole bunch of nodes at once uh, really speeds up this process. Uh, it is important, though, to have a good understanding of the workload running on your uh, on your clusters. For example, you know we have a few data uh, services. We have a couple of like in-memory databases running on our production clusters in some cases. So having this very controllable migration path where we can do it based on labels uh, allowed us to migrate those services that we may not be able to just roll them all at the same time. Um, so taking care with you know sensitive workload, um, having this like very uh, adaptable procedure using the Cilium node config CRD uh, was super important for us uh, and really is what allowed us to accomplish this migration uh, without having any service interruptions at all. Uh, by completing this migration and moving to Cilium, we actually you know, reduced the number of PRs that our self-service tenants needed to deploy a service with a network policy. You know, we cut it in half. Uh, it's all managed by like a single chart now. Um, and also, I mentioned before, but our firewall rules being significantly more readable and based on identities rather than uh, other uh, Information really goes a long way to making self-service for tenants a lot easier, as well as uh, making our security teams much happier with being able to audit and understand what's going on in our policies without needing to cross-reference cross -reference a bunch of things. Uh, the Cilium node config CRD, like I mentioned, super useful. We reused it when we were rolling out our QProxy replacement configs as well, and, uh, you know, we also have to shout out our SRE team um, because you know 
thanks to having some best good best practices in the org, all of our critical systems running on the platform have some minimum levels of fault tolerance, which obviously makes it a lot easier for us to understand failure modes and be sure that we can run this migration safely. Um, and also with best practices, it's always important to actually enforce them with policy engines. We use uh, Kyverno for that, can't recommend it enough. And uh, a big thanks to the rest of our team. Mo and I are here presenting it, but uh, the rest of our team here, uh, Alex, Alexi, Benoit, Thibault, Yan, and Vlad, uh, couldn't have done it without them. Thank you. Guess we'll open up to questions if there are any, or there's two mics on the side, and we're also going to be around here for the rest of the day. Uh, did you guys use any orchestration or automation in any larger clusters that were a little more tightly packed, where you couldn't like do large batches of nodes at once, or like anything that would do like automate the um, uh, the drain, migrate, and then validate stage? Yeah, I mean, we we had uh, a few clusters that were definitely larger. We didn't do anything too fancy. We mostly just built a, a handful of scripts that we could execute to, to accomplish that. And we, we would just pass in like a, a set of nodes based on maybe some other label or just a list of nodes and to just execute all of those tasks with the labeling, the coordinating and draining. And then, you know, obviously the, the inverse afterwards. A great presentation and demo. Um, so um, I was thinking, like, if you're able to migrate these clusters with network policies deployed, like um, you are doing per node migration, and um, for example, like the Calico may have uh, implemented network policies in a different way, while Cilium network policies works based on the identities. So how are you able to migrate the clusters with network policies enforced? Yeah, so uh, network policies, right? Um, so we had to actually, before we did all this, we did translate the Calico uh, rules that we had to Cilium network policies. So we had to do a little bit of prep work before that. Um, during the actual migration, uh, as long as we had Calico continue to run, uh, the, the Calico policies would still be in place because we're not flushing any IP table rules or anything like that. So the, during the actual migration, the rules stayed active and we had disabled the Cilium policy enforcement during the migration. After it was all said and done, we were able to enable those new rules that we had from Cilium and then flush away all the Calico like installation, CRDs, and IP table rules in order to take over the, the CNI uh, from Cilium. Yeah, so we, we have a separate chart that we use to enforce all our policies, and basically we just made a translation layer in that chart so that we had policies in both CNIs, and that allowed us to do that switch pretty easily. Thank you. That was exactly my question, so he asked it. So I'll add on top, do you have like a open source that list, or is that a tool? There's a bunch of... Um, uh, like mismatched features between the Calico and Cilium policies. So if you, since you've already done it, it would be good to see if you can open source it for others to follow it. Sorry, I think you, your question was about uh, having like compatibility between the two types of network policies. Yep. Yeah, that was definitely just a little bit of manual work that we had to do in our Helm chart. I mentioned we had a Helm chart for our firewall rules specifically, so we just had to do a bunch of you know flags and switches in there to, to handle that. 